What's going on guys, Rodanet44 back with you again out here on Kodiak Island in Alaska. As you can see from the map, we're sitting at Larson Bay Airport and our screen is filled with red. And why is our screen filled with red? Well, that's because we're looking at a 55 gallon drum. And why are we looking at a 55 gallon drum you may ask? Well, because I just got done filling up an aircraft for a new adventure. What aircraft is that? Well, the thumbnail probably gave it away, but it is the Rotorsim Pilot R44 Raven 2. Now, this is Alpha 3. This just came out a few days ago. I have not flown this aircraft yet since this update, but you know what? We're going to take it for a spin today. For today's flight, we're just going to take a nice, fun flight down to, what the heck is this airport called? Dead Man's Cove? Dead, Dead Man's Cove? I'm going to figure that out real quick. I should know this. Dead Man Bay. That's what we're looking for. <laughs> I couldn't remember the name, and it's not listed anywhere. Oh, man. Typical Rotornut fashion, not being prepared for the shoot at all. <laughs> Anyways, yes, we're going to be going from Larson Bay to Dead Man Bay. I'm going to throw up four flight again so you can kind of follow along at the top of the screen. But this is kind of our rough flight path for today. So we're going to leave Larson Bay up here, kind of follow the fjord over here, cut through a gap in the mountain range, and then we'll land somewhere over in the Dadman Bay area. Maybe we'll check out a couple of spots along the way. I'm not really sure. I don't really have a plan for this flight other than <laughs> I know where I want to end up. Anything in between there? Well, that's just a bonus. So let's get inside the cockpit, let's get this thing fired up, and let's get going. Alright, welcome to the cockpit of the Raven 2. Now, as I said, this is update 3, so I'm sure some things have changed. And right off the bat, I think there used to be a starter on the cyclic here. I'm not seeing that, so I'm guessing that it's probably just a key for the mags that we're using. Uh, let's see, get our fuel turned on. Mixture seems to be working now, so mixture goes all the way in. Battery comes on. Alternator comes on. Go ahead and get the strobe light on. Rotor brake. I already disengaged that earlier on, but the rotor brake is engaged when you first spawn in. So make sure you come up to the rotor brake and give that a click. So the rotor brake comes off. You'll know that the rotor brake is on by this light being turned on right here when you flip the battery on. Which, obviously it's out now. Rotor brake is off. So, let's see here, everything looks to be good, give her a look-see around, make sure there's nobody around us, we'll say clear, and we'll turn the key and give her a start. There we go. Needles come up, obviously quite a bit quicker of a start than in real life, but hey, what can you do? It's only an alpha right now, and helicopters aren't even supported officially in MSFS, so can't really complain. Anyways, let's see, let's give everything a check over. Clutch is on. All the other lights are out. Go, go ahead and get the nav lights on. So alternator, master battery is on. Engage the clutch. I think that's what I'm supposed to do. Clutch light went out, so hopefully I'm doing that right. We're going to get our uh, transponder set to VFR. Of course, I hit the VFR button after I do that and screw it all up. I guess you don't have to hit enter on this one. So it's on standby now. We'll go ahead and get it set to altitude. All right, I think we are ready to go. All right, we'll just pick up and we'll kind of head over to the runway here. I 
can kind of get slide on the skids now, not really, but a lot better than before where it just jumped up. All right, so we're going to hover here. We'll just kind of hover taxi over to the runway. A little bit of an incline here. Take a look over to the left. Go that direction. A little bit closer than what I normally like to be to the runway, but I want to see down the runway. Take a look over to the right. Don't see anybody over that direction. And honestly, I'm not quite sure what my orientation is here. We're heading south, so I believe I want to head east. So we'll take off to the left. I think I'm doing that right. My brain doesn't work so good when I have to think backwards. Oh yeah, we're heading the right direction. Since we do not have any floats on this aircraft or any pop-out floats, we will be kind of hugging the shoreline here and, you know, staying within reach of land. Although, <laughs> yeah, there's not a lot of good places to land on the actual land right now. It's mostly trees. But there's plenty of water. We can put it down in the water if we need to. Not the ideal situation, but hey, it's a lot better than going into the trees. So saying today's flight's going to be about 14 minutes. We'll see how true that holds. I'm sure it's going to be longer than 14 minutes. I'm sure we'll find some way to extend it out a little bit. Find something interesting. Maybe. Maybe not. Who knows. We're just out here to have a little bit of fun. If it takes us 14 minutes to get there, it takes us 14 minutes to get there. If it takes us an hour to get there... Well, <laughs> I didn't bring enough fuel for an hour, <laughs> so let's hope it only takes 14 minutes. And wow, I just noticed I am way over speeding. Slap on the wrist for that one. Pull our power back a little bit, got a little too ambitious. definitely need to do some more flying out here on Kodiak Island. I've only been out here like once or twice now, but it is a really cool area to fly in. I should also mention both the uh, the Larson Bay airport that we just left from was an add-on scenery that can be found over flightsum.to. I will have that link down in the description below, as well as the destination that we're going to, Dead Man Bay, I think it was. <laughs> I should really know that. I've read it twice now, and I, of course, didn't write it down. But, uh, anyways, that airport, as well as uh, quite a few locations around Kodiak Island here, or another add on scenery of seaplane bases and airstrips, mostly. I, I believe they're mostly seaplane bases. Uh, those those can also be found over on flightsum.to, and of course I've linked them down in the description below for anybody that wants to check them out. I've never flown to any of them, so this will be the first of many that I really need to fly into. So yeah. 
We'll just be checking this out for the first time. No sugar coating, nothing. Cool if there were some whales or something out here. I don't believe there are, though. Not in the sim, at least. Man, this is just a cool place to fly. Like, I just. The scenery around this area is just freaking breathtaking. I love it. A little bit of a village or something down there. Fishing village. Get our, uh, get our view reset there. We'll give you a little bit of a position update on four flight. Sure. Do I have I have street map on, but none of nothing is labeled here. We'll see if the sectional has anything. Just says buildings, that's all it says. Oh that's kind of a nice little field there. If that tree wasn't in the center, I would almost bring a bush plane in there. Oh, what are we kidding? I'd still probably bring a bush plane in there. <laughs> oh, look at that. Look at that beach. You know what? <sighs> I can't resist. I gotta land there. I gotta land there. It just, it just says land on me. I don't know what it is about it. But it just says land. Oh, look at that. There's another one kind of off the nose to the left there on that island, too. But, you know what? We're going to land at this one over here. I'm just going to do a little bit of a fly over here. Get a little bit closer of a look. May actually be someplace kind of nice to come back to with the uh, bush plane with some fat tires on it. I don't think there's water over it. That yeah, looks good. We'll swing on out here. Lower on up. I'm not sure what the wind's doing today or if we even have any wind. Not feeling a lot of resistance, so I'm assuming we're good. Water's pretty calm. Oh yeah. little bit of a seeding check there. Feels good. We're not going anywhere. There we have it. 
<laughs> first off airport landing. Well, not the first, but the first in this update. And nevertheless, a pretty cool little spot. And I believe there's just enough beach here that I could probably get a cub in here. Maybe even a 172. That would probably be pushing it though. We'll probably have to bring a cub or something back out here. There's a... Uh, I've seen a couple of cool spots now that we could probably land. So... Yeah. Anyways, <laughs> enough of a break. Let's get back up in there. Let's see how this departure looks. It should be kind of a cool departure. We'll get four flight off the screen. Oh yeah, that's nice. That's a cool spot. I like that. I like that spot a lot. Let's go over here and we'll check out this little peninsula. I'm not going to land at this one, but... We'll do a little bit of a fly over here, just check it out, check out this island. That one doesn't look as inviting as I thought it did. But there's another one over here. That one's kind of like the other one. Heck, that would be another good landing spot. Looks like the terrain on that island's a little rough, but... It's probably doable. Anyways, let's get back on course, shall we? Let's keep heading towards our destination. Man, there's, God, there's so many of these islands, just such cool spots. Alright, we're about five miles out from our churn down the canyon here. And I believe we can kind of see it tucked behind this mountain here on the right. Just off the nose.
yeah, I'm definitely gonna have to bring <laughs> definitely gonna have to bring a bush plane out here. I'm seeing all kinds of spots to land. Like, well, for one, there's that point there. That'll be a cool spot to land. Got that tight, confined field over there. <laughs> That'll be another cool spot to land. That'd be a uh, that point there would actually be a cool spot for like a campsite or something. Accessible by float, helicopter, aircraft. Should be enough room for it all. spike there. So I thought that canyon back there is the canyon we're going down, but it's not. It's this one right up here. here it looks like. get around this bend here and it's pretty much going to be a straight shot. Kind of see on four flight there. Pop that back up. Not too far out now. Just a couple minutes out. But of course, we're not going to keep four flight up too long because it's blocking all the nice scenery. Because all the good scenery is on the top right of the screen right now. That just kind of looks all hazy and stuff over that direction.
I'm starting to lose a little bit of FPS as we fly out this direction. Let's hold steady at 60. Now we're down to 53. I wonder if it's uh, from the scenery, or <laughs> I wonder if flight sim's just being flight sim again. That's another reason why when I try to do shorter videos, it seems like the longer you fly for, just the worse that performance gets. I really saw that with my last video, where you know I, the area wasn't that great to begin with performance-wise, and my audio was cutting out a lot. But as the flight went on, it's just like any turn I did, <laughs> the audio just cut out because there's no freaking overhead left on the GPU to work with. The sim was taking it all. Well, that and also, you got to think, recording the flight doesn't help either. Of course, you're going to take a little bit of a performance hit there. But still, yeah. And as we get closer here, we're down another 2 FPS holding, so... Maybe it's the scenery. I'm not sure. We will find out soon enough. marshy area. A lot of color out here. And now performance is back to normal. <laughs> so, yeah, I don't know. Hey, I'll take it, though. All right, that lake up ahead there should be should be where we're landing at. I've never been out here, so we'll do a little bit of an overfly. I'm gonna bring the collective down a little bit, get slowed up. Looks like there could be maybe a little bit of a strip cleared out there. So we should have a seaplane base here. There's a dock. Dock and cabin. That De definitely looks like an airstrip that's been cleared out. Some stuff on the point over there. Looks like a seaplane hangar. Another dock. I wonder if the docks are landable. We gotta try it. We just look at that thing big square platform it just it's just asking for it it just doesn't land on me it's perfect it's it's literally helicopter sized sock there. Seems like this is kind of spinning around. You know, I've used this weather program now. I, I, I do not remember what the name of it is. It, it escapes me every time. It's like something real world weather. I, I'll put it up on the screen. That's what I'll do. But I've been running that for several flights now and it seems like every time I've flown, the windsock's just been spinning around. Not really been any clouds in the sky. So, I mean, it is METAR weather, so maybe we're just not getting anything out here. But I'm not so sure that it's working right, to be honest. I'm definitely going to have to look into it and see what's going on. Let's 
see. How do we want to do this? I think we're just gonna we're just gonna swing the tail around this way. I've never tried to land on any of these docks, so. Try to do a real easy touch on it. See if we catch or if we go through it. I think we're going through it, aren't we? Uh oh, my keyboard tray just slid out. Yep, we're definitely through it. Oh, that's disappointing. I was really hoping that we'd be able to land on it. Let's go over and check out the airstrip. Actually, we'll go we'll go down the shoreline and we'll check out that other cabin first. Remember, right? I believe it's just over here in this cove. Yeah, there we go. There's the dock. We'll just sneak on into this field here. Remember to keep our tail rotor clear of the trees, so we'll kind of swing to the left just a little. Should be clear. Get up in here. We'll just pivot to the left. Hey, there's somebody there watching. Hello. All right, that's enough bothering. Let's go ahead and pop on over to the airstrip. See if I can find it. Should just be right over these trees. There it is. Looks like we got plenty of room to turn around over here on this end. Throw on the brakes here. And of course, in good old MSFS fashion, <laughs> there's a tow cart out here. little fact for anybody that may be watching that's not into development or anything for the simulator there actually is a way that you can disable uh, ground traffic and tow carts and all that from your airports however the reason that you don't see it done a lot is because the current setting is done on a per region basis 
not per airport. So basically what this means is if the developer of this airport were to take and put implement that script to take out the ground crew, tow cards, whatever for the airport, it would do it for this airport, but not just this airport. It's going to do it for a large region. So there you go. A little bit of a fact for you. That's why you don't see all this stuff taken out in certain locations where it would be unrealistic to have it. Is <laughs> you're going to mess with somebody else's airport. Plain and simple, it causes a a uh, compatibility conflict. So as unfortunate as it is. Because there's even some of my sceneries that I'd love to take some of the stuff out in. It just can't be done right now. Not effectively. Not the correct way. We'll say not the correct way. So, there you go. There you have it. Your little fact of the day. Not that you asked for it or anything. <laughs> Alright. Well, we're here. <laughs> I feel like we've seen everything. We're just sitting here hovering around the airstrip. I guess we should probably go find someplace to land. Let's go back to that first uh, first little dock there. We'll land there. We'll shut down. Seems like a good spot to end the video at. Just past the building down there. I'm pulling to a little bit of a hover here. Uh, actually, that side looks a little rough, doesn't it? Okay, we'll put on the backup beeper. Back up. And we'll just put it in the grass over there by the fuel drums. How's that? Uh, actually, you know what? We're going to land by the cabin. We're going to land by the cabin. I'm going to blow the cabin stuff all over the place. Be a nuisance. <laughs> I do believe we should have just enough room to put it down in that little sand spot right there or gravel or whatever this area is. Now obviously it would be smarter to park over there where we were before, but yeah, that's no fun. Put her in here, put her close to the trees, close to the cabin. And collective all the way down, give the pedals a wiggle. And we're solid. Definitely a little close to the trees, but <laughs> hey, we made it work. All right, so let's do a quick little shutdown here. Well, first and foremost, let's get the door open. Get the nav lights turned off. Get the transponder shut off, and all of our temperatures are good. So let's see if the mixture shuts her down. And it does. All right, that off. Master battery off. MSFS, good old pop-up screen that always gets in the way. And we'll go ahead and leave the strobe on. I. Uh, there we go. Now the mags are off. Yeah, 
and feel cut off. And there you have it. <laughs> we made it to our destination and in one piece this time. We did overspeed one time, but yeah, we're, we're going to forget about that. We're not, we're not going to bring that up. <laughs> Anyways, guys, I hope you guys enjoyed the flight. I hope you guys enjoyed following along. You know, I said a while back that we'd get to flying a helicopter, and I didn't lie. We're here. We just flew a helicopter. It's the third real MSFS flying video up on the channel now. Just one of many more to come. So, yeah. Who knows what's in store for some of the next videos. I don't know. I don't have a plan. I'm just riding this out on the seat of my pants. <laughs> Anyways, guys. Thanks for coming along. Hope you enjoyed the flight. And we'll catch you later. Roadnut44, out. <laughs>